It's May 2020 at Whitman College in Walla Walla, Washington. Located 942 feet above sea level, 46 degrees north latitude, and 118 degrees west longitude. Ancestral home of the Cayuse, Umatilla, and Walla Walla tribes. My name is Lisa Udin, and I'm an associate professor of art history and visual culture studies here at Whitman, where we are thrilled to announce the addition of underground hornship to our campus art collection. This is a magnificent creaturely sculpture in polished and patinated bronze by the internationally renowned Nairobi, New York artist Wangeshi Mutu, who I had the privilege of meeting at, of all places, an airport gate in Greenville, South Carolina. There was plenty of time to chat, laugh, and try to explain the landscape of Eastern Washington. Four years later, I was excited to learn that she was working on a major commission for New York's Metropolitan Museum of Fine Art at the Walla Walla Foundry and open to meeting again. We did, and just two weeks after the opening of that now famous commission, Whitman agreed to acquire underground hornship and place it on permanent exhibition. The piece was cast in 2018 at the Modern Art Foundry in Queens, New York, and measures 23 and a half inches high by 32 inches wide by eight inches deep. Its arrival, or perhaps I should say surfacing here at Whitman, is an invitation for our community to embark on what critics Tiffany Barber and Angela Naimu have described in Mutu's work as modes of world making that push at the limits of our very capacity to imagine publics. Like much of Mutu's art, which includes drawing, collage, film, and performance, this piece stages a gorgeous, uneasy entanglement of organic and inorganic forms that cohere around what appears to be a singular figure often the figure of the black female body, only to explode it across deterritorialized terrains that are hard to fathom. With smooth, reflective tips extending from a mangled base, the hornship is, to my eye, part bird, part antler shed, part tree stump, part insect, part spaceship, part space traveler. Here, there are uncanny encounters to be had with Constantine Brancusi's iconic Bird in Space from 1928, and its industrial analog in the streamlined designs of the 1930s. We might also recall those bronze sculptures that continue to uphold frontier myths called the American West and its ideological partner, the African wilderness. At the same time, the piece seems to enact some surrealist encounters. The violence of Alberto Giacometti's Woman with Her Throat Cut from 1932. Or the mighty maternal powers of a towering Louise Bourgeois arachnid, first cast in 1999. So the hornship, we could say, moves across great and interstellar distances, traveling between art history and popular imagery. But what about this element of the underground? What makes Mutu's sculpture more of an emergence from the ground beneath us than an arrival from elsewhere? For me, the piece plays with the aspirations of transcendence characteristic of white Euro-American modernity and pitches it downward. As an underground, hornship explores and materializes the substrates that enable what and who is modern, and what and who has a future. I see contorted forms that belong not only to familiar animal and plant life, but also those now and future lives eked out 
from what critic Greg Tate, also looking at Mutu's art, offers in the following list. Sex, death, disease, mutilation, blood sacrifices, boils, tumors, pestilence, amputation, cancer, monstrosity, sadomasochism, deformity, viral infection, biotoxins, air and waterborne contagions, biological warfare, gun violence, mutation, nuclear winter, deforestation, pollution, genocide, genital mutilation, post-Holocaust wastes. This long inventory of modern eco-social disasters, micro and macro, is less the formal subject of Mutu's art than the conditions of its possibility and resonance and the sunken coordinates of the world makers it calls into being. That underground hornship has surfaced here and now is a reason to celebrate, and I can't wait to find out what we're able to learn from it. One thing that stood out to me while working with Wayne Getchy is the freedom that she exhibits while creating. There is an openness that is refreshing. One example was when we were experimenting with various chemicals and paints for a patina. She observed for a while and then walked up alongside me and dipped the tips of her fingers in the paint and started flicking the paint at the metal. I love that she couldn't resist to see what would happen and be involved in the process. My introduction to Wangechi Mutu's collages came by accident. In the bargain section at the Portland Art Museum's museum store, my attention caught by the picture on the cover of the book, A Shady Promise, I dove into the image-filled pages without even perusing the inside book flaps. In my position as one of the directors of the Sheehan Gallery at Whitman College, I'm always learning about artists and their work. But there is something magical that happens also, discovering artworks without context. And in those initial moments with Mutu's imagery, riveted by her assembled anatomies. The words sensual, grotesque, beautiful, sinister, potent, sublime, tortured and triumphant, mixed and mingled in my mind. Her pieces left me both haunted and curious, two things I consider great art to do. So I departed the museum with a shady promise tucked under my arm. It lingered on my bookshelf for a few years, its spine throbbing dully in my peripheral vision, beckoning me to revisit it occasionally. Until the day Professor Lisa Udin came into my office and proposed we acquire one of Wangechi Mutu's pieces. The thought was invigorating, so we immediately began to explore the possibility of bringing Mutu's energy to campus. I am grateful for the College Art Advisory Committee's support of Professor Udin's proposal and their agreement to let the acquisition go forward. Mutu's work is a powerful addition to Whitman's permanent collection for many reasons. One of these is that beyond her arresting imagery, the themes encompassed in her work span disciplines and speak to numerous faculty and student interests and concerns beyond the study of art and art history. When the search for what we might bring to campus began, Underground hornship gripped me on sight with the same immediacy and viscerality of Mutu's shady promise. I recognize that as a lifelong resident of the West who spent many youthful days in the hills, 
The naturalness of this piece was in no small part what appealed to me. This sculpture is evocative of things I pulled up from the earth in mountain gullies, or stumbled over along creek washes. From a less self-referential and more formal art-worldish place, this piece captures in three dimensions the gestures of Mutu's collaged figures. Its form is so bodily, with its dark trunk and slender limbs. Both reaching and amputated, one can read in these simultaneous narratives of trauma and grace. Though not human, the underground hornship is certainly biotic. And while its gleaming antlered tips are foreboding and implicitly dangerous, the bird-like craning of the same entices a viewer to want to make friends with it. After offering these reflections on Langechi Mutu's underground hornship, newly moored on our campus, I encourage you to visit it when you can to discover what imaginative voyages it invites you to embark on. <laughs>